Hey there, fellows. <coughs> All right. Let me tell you what we're up to in this one. I happened to accidentally stumble upon this photograph. And, well, we got really curious. By the looks of this picture, it'd seem as if this even worked. But then, I mean, why even speculate on the topic of whether this worked or not? Over here we've got a lovely clutch disc, and we've got a bunch of different brake pads for front and rear wheel drive ladders, and for other cars as well. So that one looked like it's ceramic, but you can clearly tell that those are actual brake pads, allegedly. So yeah, let's cobble together what you can find in pretty much any garage, and attempt to make that sort of wonderful clutch disc. And, of course, do some testing. Okay, enough talk, let's do this. Do you enjoy sports cars, racing, and pretty girls? Well, then hit the link and subscribe to our new YouTube channel, Drift Taxi 54 where we take ladies for rides in sick sports cars. We are currently filming new episodes in sunny Thailand. So make sure to keep up with this juicy content and subscribe to the channel by following the link in the description. We make a brake pad laden clutch disc. Will it work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out, guys. I've got my lovely brake pad based clutch disc right here. We'll discuss it in a minute. We actually had to machine the flywheel for a bit more depth. With how thick this disc turned out, we decided not to trim the friction material down by much. And as for how we made it, we took apart the factory disc. The reason being, we need the snout that you slide onto the output shaft of the gearbox. So, yeah, we got to it and. Um, we dismantled the old friction disc and reused the hub, then we made the basis for the new disc out of a metal plate, which we drilled some holes through that we used to bolt the pads on. We did trim a bit of material off of them, with them being new and a tad too thick. Now obviously that'll reduce their longevity, but we just need to test how this works. So we've welded on the hub, done all of the machining. As for the pressure plate, in a previous episode where we made a ceramic clutch, I mean a clutch disc out of porcelain tile. Anyway, we already machined it down back then. And now we're going to commence assembly. Now the very first thing that I'm... noticing here is how much this weighs. I'd say it's about... four times as heavy as the OEM one. As for pros and cons, this will obviously carry a lot of inertia, meaning that the output shaft will be spinning for longer than usual. Not necessarily, but that could be the case. Judging by the weight, I think it will. I guess we'll find out once we begin testing. Now it's uh, just a matter of getting everything assembled and going for a drive to see how it behaves. So here's the trick clutch disc. We're about to install it and it's off to the races. Let's get to it. Right. Starting the engine. If I'm being honest, it's making some rather unpleasant noises. I can feel a slight. I mean, we did machine the flywheel. Maybe one of the pads got displaced. And now it's making weird noises. 
But when I let off the clutch pedal, now we're fine. Right, let me press it. Yeah, now everything is alright. I was worried it'd start doing that. Okay, let's drive forward. The disc isn't moving right now. Unlike the flywheel. And you can clearly hear a weird noise coming from there. The edges must be hitting something. But I slightly press the pedal and it goes away. The car set off just fine. No, it's actually not all that fine. It's, nah, this isn't right. There is a bit of... Perhaps while it's... While the components are not broken in... While the flywheel is still a bit coarse... I mean, the car does drive when I release the clutch. Drives with no issues. But there is a delay when you change gears. The reason for that being in the inertia. The added weight is a factor. Now we can throw it into reverse. And it's in. That's a good thing. So the disc wasn't spinning apparently. Tremendous. Going forward. The revs were too high. Let me try smoothly setting off. Now we're good. No jerkiness or anything like that. No vibrations. But the one-two upshift is a bit slow. So that's a drawback right there. Okay, well, no big deal. As they say. I'm still preoccupied with the one-two upshift. Let me try giving it a bit more throttle. Yeah, it's slow to go into gear. The reason being, apparently the input shaft continues to spin at a fairly high speed. I don't see any other explanation. But overall it works pretty well. Obviously the grip is a bit lacking, but we are driving on snow after all. There's the gear, no grinding of the synchros, but then they are in there for that specific reason. That said, there is a delay in the 1-2 upshift. I'd imagine it'll be better on the 2-3 upshift. Nah, there's still a bit of a delay. Let me try one more time. To shift from second to third. That was actually good. Third to second? There's also a slight delay. Hey, no biggie. It isn't giving me the gear right away. Okay. What if I go from second to first? Let's see how well it's able to downshift. But then, I mean, even in a normal car, until you shed a bit of speed, it's not going to give you first. And that's exactly the situation in this case. Supposedly that's normal. Nope, won't go in right away. What if I try double clutching? There's still a delay. Oh, really?
I lost the muffler for crying out loud, just when things were getting interesting. Oh well. I do think I feel a slight delay when going for third. Or maybe not. The shifter has become very notchy. Is that because of the clutch? Going for first gear? Yeah, it just doesn't want to promptly give me a gear. The downshifts are pretty good. The transmission is quite happy to give me a lower gear. But on the upshifts, there is a slight delay. Eh, no big deal. So at the end of the day, even with such modest surface area, this actually worked. I was expecting there to be vibration, but in reality everything was just fine. I didn't feel any vibrations, but the excess weight, well, that resulted in there being a noticeable delay on the upshift. Say when you're going from first to second, you press the clutch, pull the shifter out of first gear, and it's not giving you second. All because I reckon the disc is simply too heavy. The input shaft is still spinning at a pretty high speed, and you can't get into gear. The synchros haven't yet done their thing, but once the revs drop, the box does go into gear. There was also a similar effect on the 2-3 upshift, intermittently. In any case, the shifts were delayed, which is pretty unpleasant when you're really going for it. At the end of the day, it did work, but not the full 107%. So yeah, this kind of home-brewed clutch disc made using brake pads actually works, which is pretty nice. We got there. We've cobbled together yet another custom clutch disc. You are gonna need a lathe to pull this off, though. Anyway, we tried it, it worked. Try it if you're in disbelief. You saw it all for yourselves, and that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.